matter there, even a bit of fossil waste brain matter, we think. Uh, so we might be able to do some tests on that. Yeah. Yeah. That and uh, the the gentleman I mentioned earlier, Greg Nielsen, whose name we're not going to mention. Again. <laughs> I mean, he had worked for almost his whole adult life, seeking out these giants and maintaining that he found these these grave sites in southern Utah throughout the Four Corners. And he was very explicit that this is the reason why the U.S. military had an interest in these giants was not to eliminate knowledge of their existence, but to get a hold of their DNA because the U.S. military is one of their primary goals is to build a super soldier. Uh, a super soldier either through technology with a new exoskeleton or somehow accentuate their DNA so that they can take on the capabilities of these giants and then you know, send them out into the battlefield. So uh, that is very clearly one of the, the ultimate objectives of the, the giant research from the, the, the Black Ops and uh, people like DARPA and some of these other people that Greg said were seeking out the giants. And the giant phones in the love block on the Madison Museum, they don't actually have those on display. They don't. No, they don't anymore. They did a few years ago, but uh, David and his children have got to see them filming for ancient aliens. Yeah, yeah, they're not a captain. That's right. But they, they've gone now, they've been repatriated. Yeah. They take it back to the Green Land Museum, they're waiting to be buried. Be buried. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And um, let's try to uh, move through the questions as quickly as we can because we've only got about seven minutes left. So. Okay. I found out I had Basque uh, DNA and I started looking into it. And uh, I also have uh, uh, Denmark, from Denmark, uh, Scandinavian DNA. And I found that there's kind of a connection between these two people. Yep. The language is kind of similar to the way they wrote. And also, they have kind of ruined headstones. They also talk about having being friends with genteel giants. And they taught them to lay stones in circles in the Basque country. Now, they found 20,000-year-old burial sites of Basque people. And the Romans, when they found them, they called them the tall ones. The Vikings fought for Asverangians with the Byzantine Empire. Now, is there some kind of connection between the Anunnaki, the Vikings, the Basque, yeah. over thousands of years, and these are like descendants of those giants? Yeah, so we, we've got an episode coming out this season uh, about the Tua de Dada, uh, and following the linguistic path of the, the Tua de Dada, being the, the hybrid offspring of the Anunnaki, and the Irish myths of them being the fair ones and very tall. And, and so forth, and we use that word Don or Dane to, to follow them up all the way up the Danube River to Denmark. Linguistics. Linguistics, right. And following that trail, and everywhere you find these, this, this phonetic resonance of the Don or the Danes, you find these stories of giants, the tall ones, the fair ones. Even the Vikings, the Asian, their the gods were giants. Exactly. The Celtic oh, gods. Mm -hmm. The Danu is the sort of centerpiece of that thing. And of course, the Basques and the uh, Scandinavians are connected it's a water highway, connecting by, by water when it was the past way back in the day. Right. Right. Thanks. Thank you.